All right, hello and welcome to Swing It and Ding It, an iHeartMedia podcast sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. More on that later as we see the line and uh, head into Super Bowl Sunday, not too far away, but a big day. And I'm glad our, our recording time changed a little bit because we are recording this l- late Wednesday morning and some news broke, right? It's definitely big news, but it's not full news, right? So w- what happens is the SSG, the Strategic Sports Group, with the who's who of sports from John Henry to the Fen- from the Fenway Group, Stephen Cohen, Arthur Blank, they invest $3 billion into the PGA Tour, now we'll tr- which will be called PGA Tour Enterprises, which will be a for-profit. $1.5 billion of that comes immediately, um, and $900 million of that will be to pay the players. So don't really know how that's going to shake out, but uh, the first five years of, of purses are fully funded, uh, according to Daniel Rappaport, uh, which came out. And it's it, the, the part that was interesting, and we'll get into all of this, but um, you know they did a valuation of the PGA Tour, and it, it came back valued at $12 billion. That's wow. basically the Yankees and the Red Sox together or like the Cowboys or a major NFL franchise. Yeah. So I took that as like, you know, obviously we know the health, we know the popularity of it, but um, to see that valuation come out. And what I love, the, the biggest part of this press conference that I took out was the F word. We finally heard it. Fans, <laughs> right? In all of this, it's like, who's getting this million? Who's getting this million? And finally, you have people that run sports franchises that know how to make their players money, that know how to merchandise, that are now going to be running this tour for profit. To me, I think that's the biggest win in all of this, but would love to hear uh, what you guys think. Yeah. Harry, you want to go? I have a no, time go to ahead. About that. Okay. Yeah. You know, it kind of started last night, like you said, um, you know, there's so much going on last night. Again, an alert from ESPN around 730. Um, and it says Rory, quote, let them come back. Rory changes his tune um, and says live defectors should be allowed to return to the PGA Tour without punishment. A little bit later, around 930, the tour emailed members announcing that Jay Monahan would be hosting a private conference call for all members to provide an important timely update, which is a nice 630 a.m. for the players out in Pebble Beach. So right then I'm like, wait, what is going on? Or were we talking about PIF? You know, I went to, to X to Twitter. Um, and started seeing everything come out. Um, it's crazy, even though the call hadn't happened yet, how much was already out via uh, Dan Rapport, as you already mentioned, Moose. So um, this is what we know, that there was a call this morning. Uh, all tours were invited on to listen, and players heard Commissioner Jay Monahan speak. They heard John Henry, Sam Cohen, Arthur Blank from SSG, and Tiger and Peter Melnati are rumored to have joined that call um, as well. We've seen the press release roll out as Moose kind of, you know, already highlighted um, the, the basis of what had happened and what rolled out today. Um, the sources that were on the call, we did see this on X as well, that Peter Malnati was on the call and he followed Tiger and he said, you guys just heard from Tiger Woods, one of the greatest players in the world. And now this is coming from me who has never finished than better than 86. Mm. Um, he said, today's a day to celebrate noting he is exhausted by the process but energized but is uh what is to come he spoke about how hard it was for the player directors to learn about all of this to learn about ssg and to go through and make a decision but he did state that this is a step in the right direction to finally be able to be a professional golfer rather than worrying about the future of the organization so um a lot of rumors coming out that you know he kind of gave a more humanized approach from a player who's never finished, you know, in in the top right. ten, um, in a different stance rather than hearing what was coming from Jay, what was coming from Tiger, and then from the SSG organization. So um, that was interesting to read about. Um, I had a question too, especially for no. Go ahead, finish your thought. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're you're good. Go ahead. My thing is like, and Harry, we don't know how this is going to play out, but you still have there's you know there's nothing in there. We're still talking to the the PIF, right? We're still talking mm-hmm. to, to the Saudi people, but mm-hmm. now they're in a much better position of strength where before they couldn't compete. I, you know, it, it's all, yeah, yeah, we're still, we're still moving along. Do you think there is some sort of backdoor corporate play where it's like, ah, eh, you know what? We're good. Oh, wait, there's, I mean, they, they said that today's deal really has no impact on live golf or its future relationship mm-hmm. with the PGA tour. The PGA tour gets money. Live continues as a separate entity, at least for now. Regul- regulatory issues are really complicating any sort of merger. 
Um, the release and stuff on Twitter says this has no impact on ongoing negotiations with the PIF. The SSG is aware <laughs> and supportive of the negotiations with PIF. And Jay was actually in Saudi Arabia a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah. interesting to see. I still do think it's going to move forward, right, Harry? I but, hope so. Yeah, I, I, I just mean, think they're in a much better position now than they were. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, they just they have more hand, if you will, you know, in, yeah. in exactly. the negotiations. More cards which, in the play, yeah. Which is yeah. great. And, uh, you know, the private equity investment is, is great because it's going to enable these purses, these elevated purses to be sustainable, uh, you know, because they weren't at, you know, the rate that they were going and the direction that they were going. So that's great. Uh, but the, still the thing with me is I want to see the best players being able to play against one another. And that involve includes a handful or a couple handfuls of those guys on the other tour. And yeah. until that happens, you know, all this money is great for the players and it's going to, you know, it's great, I guess, in a way for the fans, but the fans want to see, I think what I want to see, right. and that's mm -hmm. John Rahm and, and Brooks Kepka and DeChambeau and all those guys playing against Rory and, and Spieth and, and Scheffler, you know what I mean? Like that's what we want. And so what do you think and, about that comment that I said early on and opened up with, right? Like that ESPN alert last night, Rory changing oh, yeah. his tune completely. Now he's saying live defectors should be allowed. Well, because Ram and Hatton cold. are his guys Seriously, and they just yeah. want a Ryder Cup and he doesn't right. want to he doesn't want that to go away. Yeah. I thought the interesting part too is and and maybe Danielle with Brandon, um, you have more info on this, but equity for the players based on performance. Right. So I yeah. don't know if it's going to be year over year or how that's going to work. But if you're inside the top, whatever, you're going to get a piece of the a piece of the pie, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you if anybody looks online, you, you can find the, the press release. And essentially, Moose already highlighted the three billion investment, 12 billion valuation. Um, the players get nine hundred million in equity shares, which will be doled out to 180 ish guys. Obviously, the higher ranked get more. Yeah. So, you know, you heard, heard Melnati speaking about, you know, not being one of those top guys. Um, for him, I guess it was just like, okay, at least I have a job. At least my company is not going under. Um, but again, you know, 180 ish guys. And I think within, I'd have to read over that press release again. It says with the option for future PGA Tour players to also have it. But it's how is that going to work? How's that structure going to play out? I'm not too sure. I think it was kind of vague with, with the rollout. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Uh, but back to your question with the PIF though, Dan Rappaport did tweet out. He said PIF investment subject to regulatory issues, but it could take a while. So how mm. much longer could this take? Will this agreement with SSG have stuff moving along, you know, at a more rapid pace? Um, and you wonder too, to right? Be determined. Is it going to be a Two point nine 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 million dollar investments, and the PGA Tour Enterprises keeps control because they right. have the majority, or fifty one percent, right? Or are they just going to come in and just blow the doors off with some crazy amount of money to invest? But like my whole thing is, Harry, you're exactly right, right? You want to see the best players play, yeah. But I also want to see them play at the courses I want to see them play at, right? Like I want to see them play at Pebble Beach, not some course in Saudi Arabia. Oh, right, and, yeah. And, and I think that's where you know Greg Norman's drive from the beginning was making this a worldwide tour and i get it right you should mm -hmm. be able to go to australia and play but you want to see the best play at places that you've been to you know the of, venue you know the yeah. venue is important too yeah. absolutely yeah. With the history was no what we talked it. about that live can't touch the history that the pga tour has but right. then also you know as the, if this continues to drag yeah. on you've got some of these guys that signed on initially their contracts will be coming to an end you know those were only like two three year yeah. deals and we're already you know well into that right now so if this drags on for another year or so you're you know like a DeChambeau or Mickelson I don't know that Phil Mickelson ha will have that much left but those guys that went first they might be eligible to just say you know what I'm going to go back which is right? why it sure has money now and then you have the new guys lives off-season editions with yeah. Rom, um, Hatton, um, Moronk, Moronk. Yeah. Um, Lucas Herbert from Tennessee, right? Caleb Surratt. Um, Caleb Surratt. Yeah. Surratt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Samuja and. But it, I mean, uh, like, think Kazuma. about how confusing, right? Like, let's just say Brandon got an offer right now for, you know, $30 million to go to live. It's like, you know, if that were two years ago, I'm pretty sure he'd be like, no, this is what I'm doing. I'm sticking to PGA Tour. Now the lines are so blurred and cross. It has to be confusing. If you're a Terrell Hatton, you get that offer now compared to two years ago. And you're like, we're negotiating as a tour with them. We're going to be all together anyway. How can I pass up on this bag? Mm -hmm. It just, oh it, it must be incredibly confusing for these guys to, uh, to navigate. 
I can't imagine. And then just, you know, now you're, you're private and then you're having grants, which will vest over time. But again, are based on career accomplishments, recent achievements, future participation. Like it's all like, yes, it's private now, but the structure, it's still, you know, if we put it in layman's terms, like the rich are getting richer. Um, so how does this help guys on the bottom who are, who are grinding and trying to compete on the lower level tours or the rookies on the PGA tour who can't get into those elevated no. events, et cetera. That is pretty uh, incredible, though. You had the one, both ends of the spectrum, from Tiger Woods to Peter Malnati. Was he wearing his little bucket hat? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just a, it was a conference. Not Lou call, Malnati, so. or not yeah. Lou Malnati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little little difference on that, but yeah, that would have been funny. But it it was just such a big, uh, you know, a big difference with with the two there, and hearing the difference in in how they spoke and and what their viewpoints were on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tiger didn't, he wasn't wearing that new crappy logo, was he? Uh, I, it was just a conference call. So there was skeleton. no visuals. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah but, but I got I to know say. it's so weird that they do say that the skeleton is for each win, but I still, oh, really? I, I'm like, I don't the, care. I don't the skeleton care suggests. I figured there like, had to be something. It's terrible. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm with you. I think it's awful. But I will say my biggest takeaway true. in all of this is optimism because of the people involved and knowing that they care about the fan experience, because I think that has been lost in all of this over the mm -hmm. past two years of, are you, I get it. You're, you you have to worry about this, this, and this and money, but is it a better experience for the fan or not? Right. Cause at the mm -hmm. end of the day, right. if people aren't coming to the yeah, tournaments, yeah. then, then you're not like, think about it. Merchant. I think that PJ tour has sucked at merchandising. Oh, terrible. Players. Like how could they not have a full line of shirts with the players images on them with their, you know, like people mm -hmm. would buy a Max home, a polo because that's their guy. And Justin right. Thomas, like, and, and I know they all have their own deals, right. With, 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 but I, I just feel like they're running golf tournaments They're They weren't running a business. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think now you have business people and it would be different if, you know, some investor, some other big, just, just infused it with cash. You have guys that run teams that run organizations, guys and gals that, that are in it every day. Mm -hmm. That just is going to make the experience better in my opinion hopefully yeah totally yeah. right and it is noted that like the fan experience and things of that nature there was a portion of this funding that is dedicated to improving that and if you go on twitter it's you can spend a couple hours and go down a rabbit hole on there this morning um a lot of people are asking what about the fans what about our experience absolutely hopefully they make the got the, uh, the tv coverage better with this yeah oh <laughs> That's a whole other. That's a whole other issue. Harry, I mean, how many golf resume. shots? How many shots are you going to see on Thursday when you watch it? Like five shots, and then it's like just it, it, it's just yeah. brutal. I don't know. But again, now you have people in the room that know how to. They know how to present. They know how to present it, how to present yeah. it right? Yeah. And I really mm -hmm. feel like for so long it was like worrying about the logistics of running a golf tournament, which is pretty damn hard to do, right? If you're if you're if you're running a football game, it's already set up. The field's there. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you don't have to bring in merchandising. Well, even tents. the swinging and digging tournament, you know how much work <laughs> goes into that, right? Right. right. Now imagine yeah. multiple courses or you know, yeah. cuts, players. But four it, listen, days, I mean, there prep. there were tons of fans out uh, at Tory. Obviously, it's Tory Pines, but like, you know, we'll get into that too with with that leaderboard and 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 you know the the history over the past year. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, I, I think it's. Uh, it's interesting. And, and you wonder, like, had this SSG partnership come to fruition two years ago, where would Liv be? Right. Would half of these guys be on that tour or would it have been like, oh, we're, we're strong. We're going to stay right. here. Right. I just think I think it was a, Even a reach still, out and I desperation. I think they'd go because that amount of money offered versus what? Equity, how, yeah, that that equity is not going yeah. to. Guaranteed money is guaranteed money. What, yeah, yeah. Cash in hand. Yeah. Very, yeah, it very, very Trump's legacy, I guess, is what we're finding out. Yeah. You know, Casual's 60 everything. million dollars, you know, Cash is, hat is like, all right. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He can curse about the courses in any form. Oh, no. and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to miss him, though. Like, I, oh, yeah. I enjoy watching him and, you know, he, he, he plays really well on hard golf courses. He's a great iron play. He's fun to watch. Plus the all the antics. You know, I, you know, will I tune in to live to watch him? Probably not. Yeah. But see, Harry, that just furthers your point that you said earlier is like, you want to see all these guys, you yeah. want these, but we want them together. Right. So. Yeah. It'll be interesting. The biggest thing is, is, right. Let's just say these two tours run parallel, but they're somewhat connected over the couple of years. Like 
how do you handle official world golf ranking points to get these guys back into some majors? There's going to have to be, they're not playing 72 holes. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. How did, because yeah. The, yeah, you want these guys playing in the majors and we know some of them deserve to be right. But sure. they, didn't, they didn't forget how to play golf, but how the hell are they going to figure that out? Unless they yeah, have, tough. it's going to have to be some sort of uniformity if you want at the end to be able to cross over and play in, in each other's events. But man, it's Crazy. great. Think about when we started this podcast, it was like, you know, none of this. It was talking about right. the tournament, right? We saw the line and we moved on. Right. I know this morning I'm thinking, or last, yesterday, I'm like planning out my day. I'm like figuring it all out. And then all of a sudden it's just one thing after the other. It's all, But you talk about party. Rory too. I can't keep track of his oh, yeah. stance on this. Let me, yeah. at this point right now, he has flipped so far. I wouldn't even be surprised if he actually joined Liv. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, would you really be surprising. shocked? I no, wouldn't. No. If John, Ron, if, if they would announce he's on John Ron's team, yeah, I mean, he would he would need his own team, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. we'll kick Kieran yeah. Vincent to the curb. Here comes Rory. Yeah, that's maybe right. fold up the no cleats. disrespect, Kieran. Fold but... up the majestics. And right, give him the but Harry, that's what I thought. I saw. I literally had a screenshot in case it you know randomly disappeared or something. I was like, wait, what? Because all I saw was Rory and Liv, mm -hmm. and I was like, wait, and then I was like, oh, he changes his tune. On That'll get you to click, like, Rory, right? Liv, clickbait. They got me. Yeah, but you know, it, said, yep. So, so you know, Matthew Pavon wins the Farmers Insurance Open, and it made me like look back, right? Because this year it was Chris Kirk mm -hmm. at 150 to one, Grayson Murray at 500, Nick Dunlap at 50. I don't even know what it is, 50,000, I guess it was, and, and the same as same as Grayson, which is actually pretty interesting, and then Pavon at, at 17,000. Last and year, nobody that's 170 on our to one. Kings. Yeah, 170 <laughs> to one. 170, yeah. right? Yeah. Last year, it was Rom, right, mm -hmm. who won the century at plus right. 650. Siwoo at 3,700, right, who wins the Sony. Then Rom again, who won the Amex at plus 600. And then the Farmers were home at 2,500. So the highest was, was Siwoo at 3,700. 3, yeah. yeah, it's that's long wild. shot steady. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And I, I got a, a text on uh, over the. I think it was Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, third round leaderboard. It was a snapshot of the PGA Tours tweet uh, from a golf pro buddy of mine. And he says the PGA Tour is in trouble. And it lists Jaeger, Pavon, Hogard, Dietrich, Pendrith, Trace Crow, who I never heard of, and Jake Knapp all on the leaderboard. And I, you know, I'm like, well, I'm watching, but this is all just evidence of you know these big players underperforming. In these events, I mean, where where was you know Shawfle? Where was Cantlay? Degala? Mm -hmm. You know, I know Homa made a run on on early Sunday, and then he kind of fell off a little bit. And Finau was in the mix for a little while, but where are all those yeah, other names? T six, right? Yeah. Are they just waiting for their signature event to to step up and play better? Yeah, right. Well, that's did, a great why point, did Harry. Cantlay bother to make the weekend? He did nothing. Yep. Yeah. So that's a great yeah, point. People are mad at the leaderboard, but right. you like, can't get still, mad at these guys. They're playing high. their asses off. Yeah. And yeah, golf nerds like us, right? There. We don't care because right. I tell you what, I, if you watch that on Sunday, it was some of the most entertaining was golf good. that I've watched oh, yeah. in a long time. We were firing <laughs> off group chats. Like it replaced that, re replace Matthew Pavan with Tony Finau, and everyone's going crazy. Over right. That, oh, right. Going yeah. up. Yeah. But they're they're it, coming home early to, to turn that on. Yeah. 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 But I mean, good for good for Matthew Pavana. One shot. He, he was playing really well. Right. He gets the one yeah. shot win over over Hoygaard, Hoygaard. as you said. Um, Steven Yeager with the T3, Xander T9, Tony Finau T6. So they were all hanging around. But that last hour was was yeah. awesome. I mean, his shot out of that rough. And now there's some controversy because yeah. there's some footage of him looking like he's stepping down behind the ball with his foot. But the rough was so thick. It, you can't tell if that's where the ball was. Maybe it was something that was just sticking. I'm going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Right? Yeah. yeah Maybe it was something that was sticking up that was catching his eye and he just he stepped down on. I don't know. But yeah, you know, it's like it's like there's a tape's now, right? Everyone's right. Well, thank God they don't allow down. calls in <laughs> calling anymore. Remember a couple of years oh, ago yeah. they called in about Lexi and they were like, she, you know, moved her yeah. ball. It's like. <laughs> but yeah, he's coming off the three putt bogey on 17 and you step up to that 18th tee. Yeah. Kind of a tough fairway to find. He puts it in the left fairway bunker and then goes bunker to rough. Like he didn't even get it back in the fairway. No. Uh, and so Sick he's got about, about 148 yards. And I don't know if it was a wedge or a nine iron or what he hit, but he put it to seven feet and made the putt. So good on I him. Think I might have heard a seven iron out of that or something. Uh, really? No. Yeah, 147 it was, yards. It was so thick. Like you saw, he had a. I, I could be wrong, but like you saw the torque he had to put into that. 
I mean, what an incredible shot. And then, wow. makes the pump. yeah, I mean, that was, that was awesome. It really, really was. And he was kind of trending. I mean, he's, you know, he's, yeah. he's got yeah. the dual tour membership now as a result yeah. of what he did last year on the DP when he won the Spanish open and he finished in the top 15 on that order of merit, but he was a T seven at the Sony. Yeah. So, you know, he was kind of in the mix on, on the weekend at the Sony. And then, uh, you know, I think he finished in the thirties last week. I think um, he's got gold medal AMX, in Paris on his mind. Could be. I think, I think yeah. he's looking to represent Team France, and how, could, how could he? How could he not at this point? But when in you put Paris. it from the bunker into the rough, you're thinking: Is this a Van Veldian moment here? Is this French guy going to come unglued and put it <laughs> into the Devlin's billabong and you know <laughs> give the tournament away? Yeah, no, I mean, it was great. a lot of drama, and, and good, good on Hoygaard, right? We know he's an elite, oh, yeah. class player, but he hung around and made it. I mean, he made that putt, you know, the, his shot on 18. He did everything he had to do to get back in there. So yep. he, it's good to see that young talent um, continue to play, play well, you know, play very well. Well, Harry, you mentioned unglued. I think that's a great segue into the LPGA. Oh. Yeah. Nelly Corda blowing a four-shot lead. In round four, she had eight pars on the front nine and a single bogey coming in at the par four number five. You know, coming yeah. in, things getting a little hairy starting on the par 4 14, where this stretch may be similar to the kind of golf that us and our listeners play bogey, double, bogey. Yep. And then this is where she gets back to Nelly Corda, Eagle Birdie, but not Eagle even to birdie win. Finish. Yeah. Just Eagle to get birdie into a playoff. Finish. Right. To get yeah. into a playoff, she forces a playoff with Lydia Coe, who also eagled that par five, number 17. So they both yeah. had threes there. They both finished 11 under, and then Nelly did end up uh, winning in a playoff. But Harry, how wild was watching that stretch? It was in. wild. And it's, it's also the golf course that, that Nelly kind of grew up on. I mean, she, it's right by her house where she grew up and she played on it a million times. And, uh, when I was watching it and I was watching it taped, but I knew the result, but I'm watching Lydia Ko after she had finished, she thought she had this thing sewn up <laughs> oh, and yeah. she's kind of smiling. Like she's, after that Eagle, she was after, yep. after the Eagle, she's like all giddy. Like she had no, no outward emotion until she made that Eagle and she thought it was done. Did and you see that of, shot? With oh, yeah. the flowers and the stuff next to where her uh, her Aaron shot ball was literally was like five inches from like the champagne and the flowers that they had out. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, like, thank you. It's crazy. Uh, like, sorry uh, about that. Let's get that yeah. back. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, she wait, she made eagle on seventeen. Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. great, great uh, golf, but still, really just good. you know, thinking Nelly Corda going into Sunday with a four shot lead, yeah. you're like, okay, you know. And the win would have gotten Co into the Hall of Fame. Because they do oh, this yes. weird that's, point that's what the, that's what the flowers and the yeah, champagne they do this for. weird <laughs> point system where if she would have won <laughs> yes. that, that would have guaranteed realize her that. the amount of points needed to get into the hall of fame. Yep, yep, yeah. that's what all the stats with the stuff is for. Yep. Just find that picture on Twitter until it's, it's kind of sad, but it's but it's pretty funny. Oh, but, I didn't know it was for all of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, what now they have off until February 22nd, so maybe a co will get into the uh, the hall of fame with the uh, in, in Thailand, the Honda. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't yep. change that one to the cognizant yet. <laughs> Yeah. So Harry, I had, a, I had reached out to you about the whole Anthony Kim situation because yeah. it was a little bit before my time and, and I didn't quite get it. I, I feel like there's probably some people listening to this that might be in the same boat. Would you mind just giving that a little bit of a brief synopsis of yeah, I learned what, a little what bit this there. really yeah. means for Anthony Kim and you know why the, he's such a phenomenon? Well, let me find this text. You had, you had sent that to me over the weekend. It's in our group text. Oh, yeah. it's the group text. Uh, well, yep. let, me, let me pull that up. Like uh, I said, I learned a little bit too. I, I you know, he said, what, Harry, explain to me. We have a lot of text now. in this group text. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually saw it earlier. I could, let me I scroll could... back. Um, we'll do it live. It's probably yeah, we'll do this me. live. Uh, I got wow. it. Wow. We have want a me, lot want of text. Want me to read your words? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Because okay. I, I, I haven't found it yet. So I said to Harry, can you can you explain the Anthony Kim phenomenon to me? It was really before I got into it. Harry said he was a young phenom who had personality and talent, won three times early on and finished third at Augusta, one of the years Phil, Phil won, blew out his Achilles and was never the same, disappeared for 12 years. His absence has made him into a folk hero, party animal too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I was folk thinking, hero. I get it now. Like an American Tom Kim. You remember, you know, the personality that Tom Kim became at the President's yeah. Cup? Like this guy had that gravitas and he had game and he was an American. He played at Oklahoma. He was a college stud and he got after it. Like this guy would go out and, and 
there were there were stories about this guy. Okay, partying and like, I mean, you would have loved to have hung with him. You know, go play eighteen and then go out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. I, I think I think a lot of people were uh, either either you know it well or or you kind of are on the periphery like me. Yeah. So it was good to uh, good to see that uh, our DraftKings contest. A couple more spots yeah. left for that. Um, how about that leaderboard last week? The winners last week. Jeez. Sean Brace taking home first, and Aton Shander coming in second. Really? Yep. Yes. See, yeah. I was I threw up on myself by the end of. Uh, <laughs> Before before the weekend, before they made the cut, so I didn't even. Oh yeah, more well, more talent <laughs> day killed me. Same. We had almost. I, Harry, you and I have very similar lineups. I was looking oh, at really? them, yeah. and I was just like, oh, "Okay, here." And go. me, who the person who runs the pool, forgot to take Moronk out of my lineup. I had Moronk, but thankfully, I took him out. I, I didn't know yeah. you had him. Man, we can't. And our boy him. Colin Berger was in third too. So That's it was right. Like Dave Tallarita was in fifth. It was all our guys were up yeah, at the uh, towels in there. Yeah, so check that out. Also, our golf outing, we're going to shut down early bird registration tomorrow. So if you're listening to this and you're going to play anyway, hop in. You might have a, a good chance of winning a trip to Casa de Campo. Um, we talked a little bit about full swing. There was an announcement that I think it's going to be made today at Pebble Beach. I think Wyndham Clark even tweeted something out. It's going to get lost in the shuffle with today's news, but it looks like they will have the announcement of when full swing season two will be coming to a Netflix screen near you. Uh, how about these guys? Look at these. My boy Brian Ebert sent me these Under Armour golf shoes. Oh, nice. Look at those. Wow. Oh, wow. You can hardly tell they're golf shoes like until you look at the bottom. Oh, okay. So they, they don't have them. spikes yeah. on them. Okay. They, right. Yeah, they look good. They are the, uh, they are the fan- phantom golf from Under Armour. So thanks. Uh, thanks. To my Is that boy. like a blue and gray Eves kind of for that, coloring? For sure. Is it blue and gray? With yeah. Color? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Like I a like navy that. blue. Yeah, we didn't. Cool. I did an unboxing with Brad yeah. this morning with Scotty, yep. and everything yep. was all blue. Yeah, it seems strong. like this, this season's colors is all like navy blue, different shades of blue, which which I think looks pretty good. Yeah, Danielle, I, I believe that your tea has been spilled already in this episode. <laughs> I would imagine, correct? Any more tea? Yeah, there, there, there's really not too much more tea. I had. I think the focus was on that. I mean. Um, we, I can, we or, can take it old school we, and go a little bit, uh, corn we, spill, we, we done spilled it already. <laughs> we did. But if you want to take it old school, we can talk a little corn fairy real yeah, quick. Let's go corn fairy. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I gotta, I need somebody to help me with the, um, pronunciations here. I'm going to have to look Uh-oh. online, but Aldrich, uh, Pocketer, is that right? <laughs> is that how we say it? I don't know. Age 19, he becomes the youngest Corn Ferry Tour winner, um, winning the Bahamas Great Abaco Classic at the Abaco Club, carded 10 under 278 um, with two-stroke victory over Quade Cummins and then Kyle Westmoreland, um, who we saw. He was a rookie last year on tour. Um, so this is pretty cool, I thought. 19 years, four months, and 11 days. You have to get down to the nitty-gritty when you're going for these records. He surpassed right. Jason Day for the record as Corn Ferry Tour's youngest winner. Other younger players after um, Aldrich, and then it goes J Day, and then Sung Jay, and then Akshay. Mm. So um, Panama Championship starts tomorrow. So that is their third event of the season. So um, quite a few guys that our friend Jason Bale works with that we'll get on the podcast uh, coming up soon. But keep an eye on that because, as we know, they will be the uh, the rookies of next year. So I'll keep us in tune with Corn Ferry Tour as we go. Um, and then real quick with live early on, I mentioned their off season additions and they did release their 2024 team rosters. They're in Mayakoba this week, which used to be a right. tour site for the PGA tour. Um, I think that's one of the only sites that they've gotten that are the PGA tours, but, um, I have a screenshot of that. So we'll get powers to, to put that out of the new, um, team lineups for this year. You know, on a big news day in the world of golf with the, uh, SSG, funding going to the PGA tour enterprises, but my, I will be glued more than ever to this tournament this weekend because I'm going to get a chance to go out there in July with, uh, with, with iHeart. It's a basically a client trip. I think I talked about it before where if you have three or more clients from your market, you know, I get to go out as a host and staying at uh, the inn at Spanish Bay playing Spanish Bay, Spyglass, Pebble, Pebble, the hay, I, oh, wow. probably, I think we have like a country Part artist coming course. in one night yep, to perform. Yeah. You're basically so, doing what the, the players do, but an yeah. elevated version. Yeah, I am I'm pumped. It's well, the end, end of July. 
Guaranteed, yeah. you're going to have better weather than they will this week. The weather yeah. is going to be awful. And well, this do you guys what... remember last year when oh, I was yeah. talking about? It was insane. The guys were – I remember Harry Hall was in Brandon's group. He hit driver on a par three and sprinted to the green to mark his ball. Yeah. It was insane. And, of course, like – Three minutes after they finish up, maybe thirty seconds after they finish the hall, the whole, the whole, blow, the, the horn blows, and I'm like, of course, but <laughs> this Sunday there's rain and wind potential for heavy rainfall. High fifty seven, winds twenty five to thirty five miles an hour, chance of rain ninety percent, with rainfall nearing half an inch. So yeah, I'm sure it's going to be very similar to last year. Which well, they're going to get two inches between today and tomorrow too of rain, so that's going to be really soft. You mentioned the wind. Uh, and, and that's the thing that stinks about this this tournament is the time of year when they play it, it because the weather is just typically, you know, hit and miss. And when it when it misses, you know, you get delays and it's just it's just tough to watch because. Uh, but Moose, you're going to have a, a blast out there in July. Oh, yeah. Maybe that should be a team trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Team, my yeah. heart. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yes, this is a signature event, uh, 80 yeah. players, no cut, and a little bit of a change in format because the M portion will only be through Friday. So Correct. Saturday, There's Sunday, only, it's just They're only playing those. two golf courses, not three, like they typically had Monterey Peninsula as the third yeah. one. Oh, but it's just Pebble and Spy? It's just Spyglass yeah. and Pebble, and Pebble will be three rounds on Pebble, like you said. Did no they cut. say why they, they took out? No, I think it's because it's less players. Yeah, it's right? less players, so yeah. they don't need all of that all of that uh, yeah. time. But you have eighteen there was of the some top twenty on the uh, the exemptions that were there. Oh yeah, uh, big yeah. time, mm -hmm. big time. Yep, but you, you do get eighteen of the top twenty: Scheffler, Rory, Vic Hovland. You know the who's who: Xanders, Homa, Spieth, Cantlay, Thomas, Morikawa. I'm just reading in the DraftKings leaderboard right off yeah. the top. But, <laughs> um, you know, let's talk about the course, of course. And uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, like you said, Spyglass, but Pebble will be the where yeah. it uh, where it really finishes up. Yeah, I guess R rounds. Rory and Scheffler are at the top of the board, I, I, I think, on DraftKings. Yeah, Scheffler at 900, both at 900. And Rory, I think they were at eight, 800, 850, so that's moved up a little bit. But Rory yeah. played here in the U.S. Open a few years ago when Gary Woodland won it. But he's only played in this event, I think, one other time at this time of year. Because <coughs> obviously the, the U.S. Open, different weather, kind of more moose-like. It's, you know, in June you get better weather. But yeah, Pebble Beach, uh, <coughs> Friday, Saturday, after they split the first two between Spyglass and Pebble Beach. These are the smallest greens on tour. This is more like the 1912 club when you get to the green size. <laughs> 3,500 square feet. I can identify with this place a lot better than I can some of these other <laughs> Uh, venues, but 117 bunkers, and I believe that's more than they have on the old course. So there's a lot of sand, but these ocean side holes are just unbelievable. The whole place just so iconic. You, the par five sixth hole uh, with the with the long uphill approach shot, the seventh hole, which is a, just one of the most iconic golf holes in the world. The short par three, just a little over 105 yards with a 40 foot drop off from tee to green. And then one of the coolest holes, which is the eighth hole with the uphill blind tee shot, 428 yards. This is the one where Jordan Spieth was right near the cliff yep. a couple of years ago, and he actually hit his shot. And, and we were thinking he's going to fall. <laughs> he's going to fall down over the, <laughs> the rocky cliffs under the beach, 40, uh, 40, 50 feet. I mean, it's actually about 100 feet above the ocean and the, the approach over the cliff, small sloped green. Jack Nicholas said it's the finest second shot in golf on number eight. Par four, ninth, and tenth are all you want uh, along the beach. Uh, they're long, a lot of wind, and the, the um, fairways slope left to right down towards the beach. So it's a, a tough tee shot, tough second shots because the greens are well bunkered. You get on the back, the back side of this. I mean, you know, the par four or par five, fourteenth hole is really no easy birdie for a par five. The fifteenth hole, you got seventeen mile drive to the right, a couple of fairway bunkers on the left side. Then you turn to take a left, and you got the par four sixteenth. Now you're heading down towards the water again with the tee shot over Whitman Lane uh, to the over that center fairway bunker. You get the approach in between the two trees to that really slanted green. 17th, which is, has had some of the greatest moments in uh, in major championship history take place there. You had the one iron from Jack Nicholas in the 72 U.S. Open. Then you had uh, Tom Watson's chip in at the 82 U.S. Open, all out there along the water on the 17th. And then, of course, the 
uh, par five 18th with that, uh, you know, the rocks and the beach all the way up the left. Sometimes guys hit it down there and they actually play it from down there. Mm -hmm. And you got that cypress pine tree in the middle of the fairway. There used to be two there, uh, but one got knocked down with a storm. And then they got the big tree up by the green, which was actually replaced this is gigantic really? cypress tree that got split in half by a storm. So they took it out. And then a year later, they moved a gigantic tree. You got to go watch this because they, they, the amount of money they must have spent oh God, yeah. to dig this tree up with all the roots, keep it intact, put it on a, a tractor trailer that backed it on down from the first hole to the 18th hole to replant it because wow. they wanted the tree back near that green. So just uh, such a great spot. Uh, I mean, I, I've been there. I've been there for the tournament, for this tournament. I'd love to play it someday. I'm envious of you, Moose, but I can I can imagine I'd like to play it twice because I think the first time <laughs> I played it, I'd be just looking right. around all the right. time. I mean, concentrating on playing golf would be pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. didn't play it, but walking around, that was that was oh, me, awesome. Harry, just like you. I was yeah. like, oh. it's incredible. Yeah. I was there. I have I was there not for God went on my honeymoon. I just went there for brunch just to like hang out and see the place. Yeah. And it was right before the US Open. So I did some damage in the uh in the shop. Oh, the pro <laughs> shop. <laughs> so my wife said that. Me. She like, said, well, you're maybe, leaving your credit cards here. You. <laughs> your, car, your card is already on file. <laughs> oh, that's, amazing. that's right. That's, that's right. Great. You have well, some history have... here. You have uh, tw yeah. last year, Justin Rose, um, Tom, Tom Hoagie won in 22. Daniel Berger won here in 21. Interesting yep. to see what he does. Nick Taylor in 20 and then Phil back in 2019. And uh, I always like to give you some good stats from our buddy Jeff Ulrich. Make sure you're following at the Fantasy Grind. Since 09, the winner had a T16 or better in one or more previous three starts, including the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. Eight of the last 13 winners had a top 10 or better in one of the two previous starts. So mm -hmm. a little bit might be different, right, because the format's changed this year. It, it, it kind of um, falls off a little bit differently. But uh, let's, let's see the line with DraftKings. And give me a moment here to talk about our friends at DraftKings who are back as, as our sponsor. We're very proud and happy to yes. be associated with them. Um, and it's, you know, it, as much as it's golf season, it is Super Bowl season, right? So if you're looking for uh, a super offer for Super Bowl 58, DraftKings Sportsbooks has you covered. New customers can bet on a big game and turn five bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Right now, the Chiefs are sitting at plus two over and under 47. I think it's going to be really interesting to see where that goes. But download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the code DING, D-I-N-G. New customers can get five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code DING. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit 800gambler.net. In New York, call 877 nope, 8 hope and y or text hope and y In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling, call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 160 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All Great right. job. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's make sure we cut Thank that. Thank God so you guys don't, do don't make me do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so for, I'll, I'll kick us off here with, with see the line. Um, you have Jordan Spieth, eight years, never missed a cut, has four top tens at that 1600 number. I, I'm not scared of that as a, as a winner. How about Nick Taylor? I mean, yeah. 130 to one uh, who won here. He has uh, a top 30 in five seasons. He's had a, at least a top 30 here. And he's had a recent form, a T7 at the Sony. Um, Jason Day plays really well here. Five top fives. I like him in a top five, though, at 900, even though his win number is pretty good. And he Maverick McNeely. from last week when he, yes. where he, he really played poorly on another golf course that he usually plays well. Yep, yep. And then I like our guy Maverick McNeely, multiple top fives, had a T37 in Torrey last week. Um, you can get him in a top five for 3,000. So pretty yeah. good number on DraftKings Sportsbook. Yeah, he he'd probably be a good uh, play in the you know in a, on a fantasy squad. I do my lineup. Yeah, yeah, okay. like in a lineup. I looked looked at Taylor Moore too. I put him in a lineup. Mm -hmm. He's uh, sixty four hundred dollars. You need some of those, you know, one or two of those guys, 
you know, in the 6,000, 7,000 range to, to make the cut and could really make a difference. He's uh, two strokes gained. He gains two strokes per round on the field at this golf course, does Taylor Moore. Uh, another guy who plays really well here, Denny McCarthy uh, in the field this week. I'm taking him in a top 20 at plus 220. Uh, he's also a, a nice long shot. If, if it continues this way, a guy like 75 to 1, you know, could easily win this golf tournament the way things are going. Taylor Moore, by the way, I mentioned he's 180 to 1 to win. Patrick Cantlay, you mentioned he plays really well here. He needs a bounce back from a miserable weekend uh, at Torrey. He's plus 190 in a top 10. And I, I'm, a, I'm with you, Jason Day. I think he bounces back at plus 170 in a top 20. I remember last year watching Denny's like final back nine. Brad and I were hanging around. We're like, we might have to go back. He's going to win this. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd have to pull up his scorecard, but I think he birdied like six out of the last nine holes coming in, um, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. So I'm going to definitely take a look at that. What are the numbers, guys, on uh, Nick Dunlap being his first tournament as a pro? That's right. Uh, let me he's pull he's it uh, paired with celebrity. David Dorman, and he's paired with uh, Wolby and Xander's group. While you're pulling that up, just a couple uh, celebs. How would you feel, uh, Corey Connors? He's playing with Tom Brady. Does that make you a little – that <laughs> add, well, I, thought, pressure, I, would, I, thought, I thought Keegan was playing with him. Is it, is it, is it Connors? Wow. It shows wow. It shows on here, unless they switched anything, that he's with, with Tom Brady. We have Tommy Fleetwood and Larry Fitzgerald, um, Paul Gasol with Ben Griffin. Uh, let's see any other – Josh, Josh Allen, right? Yeah. He uh, Josh player. Allen is with Bazootin. Who? There you go. Oh, There's there he the is. Match up for you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I don't know why I'm not finding. Oh, here we go. Nick Dunlap, 130. That's a, you know, he's sitting right around, right where a little bit, um, a little bit worse odds than Maverick McNeely, mm -hmm. but right below Thomas Dietry and, and Hoagie. Um, How do you guys who, think he'll play in his first pro event coming off of a big win, taking one week off, then coming back and playing in a, it's so kind of been a world for him. I don't. I don't know if two I, hard I, courses. Like, I don't yeah, know. it might take a couple of weeks to get a uh, get, to get acclimated. acclimated here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I tell you, who's not in the field is Willie Z. Not in the field, but playing well. Played well last week uh, at Tory. I think he's going to come back quicker than you know maybe some of us thought. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Any other plays we like here? Do you get a? Uh, you get any matchups in there, Harry? No, I didn't like any of the matchups on DraftKings this okay. week. Okay, right. I looked at them, but I, I did not. Uh, I did not jump at it. I put right. together a, a fantasy team for our contest. I'm going to do that oh, as I gotta, soon I gotta, as we hang up. Yeah. I got to put in the one and done too. Oh, that's right. Oh, I have. I haven't done that invite yet. Invite me still, to that. I got to set it. I did. I I, yeah, but I don't know if I could in Florida. I got your email last week, but yeah, oh, yeah. It's, um, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. It. it, it had made me turn on locations. I was saying, I think I'm gonna no go. With, bueno. I think I'm gonna go with Spieth. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I figured a lot of people would. I might, yeah. I may just go like with an outlier, like a Ben on. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Ben on, maybe McCarthy. I like that. I for like sure. McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, listen, great stuff, Danielle. Thanks for all the info. I know you were kind of plugged into that due to your uh, situation at home. So <laughs> it was good to get all that. Um, excited to see what's what goes on and really excited to watch this tournament this weekend yeah. with uh, the best of the best playing in it. I just hope there's no weather delays. I know yeah. the weather's going to be bad, but I just hope they don't have to come off the golf course. Yeah. yeah. And then delays and you're sitting there listening yeah. to your favorite guys speak right here. Oh, oh my God. I can't <laughs> take it. I just I love can't. It. Oh, man. All right. Um, we will be back next week to recap it all. Thanks for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, uh, Fox Sports the Gambler YouTube page where our videos go. You can get us anywhere you listen to your podcast or on the radio on Fox Sports the Gambler uh, on Wednesday evenings. And we'll be back next week. Thank you.